Hello everybody, so this is a collaborative video with Zach Heavens, so please check out his channel once you've watched this and uh, seen what he's designed. So the premise of this video is uh, Zach had some questions from his subscribers, D&D players um, or cosplayers, but were wondering whether it is able to have a harness of armor that you would be able to uh, assemble and uh, put on yourself independently without anybody's help. And so what Zach and myself have done here is designed a harness of armor uh, that you, you can put on by yourself. Um, he's done his own and I've done my own and we've done this together uh, and see what we could come up with. Uh, I'm going to explain what I have done and then after this please go to his channel and check out what he's designed. Also check out his other videos as well. He's got some really fabulous videos on uh, armor, especially in the 15th century. Uh, so yeah okay so I'm going to explain how this would be put on and uh, what the different uh, components consist of so initially you would be in what is called your soft kit so that would consist of a uh, hose uh, if I zoom in here you can see the hose uh, underneath the armor armor here so you've got blue hose uh, which are just like trousers basically um, that um, attach to uh, the arming jacket over the top of the hose on the knee you would have knee wrappings um, just to avoid any chafing just a little bit of extra padding on the knee there um, and then you'd have uh, turn shoes uh, normal turn shoes of the 15th century uh, you would then have a, a underwear of course and then a shirt made of linen and then a arming jacket which is quite thin um, only a few layers of uh, um, linen or canvas or you know or silk in fact if you have the money for it um that is quite tight fitting and has um, lacing points that you can lace on your armor so um in this case only a couple a uh, couple of points so on the best use here um but i'll talk about that later on so you've got your soft kit on what do you put on in terms of armor um in in what order so first would be the legs. So I would put on the sabatons first, highly articulated uh, shoes, basically, um, that interlock with each other, many lanes so that they can fold over um, and then you can easily run about without any issues. Um, so these would be uh, pinned on um, with a hinge pin. Um, so what you'd have is on the outside, you'd have a hinge, uh, and then on the other side, you'd have almost like a almost like a lock pin, um, or you could have a spring pin. Uh, all it does is um, the back part, the back part of the um, sabaton, um, is a separate plate, and that will go over here, um, the main part of the sabaton, and you can hinge pin or attach on whatever, and then. Um, that is then fastened to your turn shoe basically um with you know it has to be quite tight fitting um obviously tailored to your foot um some cases um they are laced on the top part of the end point of the sabaton there um or they could be there would be a staple that would go underneath the foot um and then you you would basically slide your foot into that um so that the sabaton isn't going to be flying around or flapping around um, independent of itself so it's actually fastened to the shoe itself uh, your turn shoe so you've got your sabatons on next would be the greaves now the greaves consist of two plates and it goes on the knee highly tailored um, and you've got a front shin plate and then you've got a back plate or a calf plate maybe um, but the back part of the greave, which is a separate plate, and you would have uh, a couple of hinges here and here, and then on the inside of the leg, you'd have two straps. Typical, very typical, nothing too special here. Um, and these have to be also quite highly tailored because they um, they go along the curvature of your leg, and then it makes it nicely tightly fitting, um, and it's not going to um, rattle around on your leg or rest upon your um, top of your foot here it's actually going to be floating 
upon your knee because um, if it rests upon <coughs> sorry the top of your foot there it's going to cause a lot of um, issues um, so yeah then you would attach on your greaves after that you would put on what is called your crease <coughs> uh, so the crease uh, consists of uh, the demi greave on the bottom here um, please notice that there is a pin see so a pin here that goes um, that is on the greave and goes through the demi greave um, and that um, helps um, make the whole leg harness uh, one unit um, so that it's not going to be moving around the crease isn't going to be moved around um, and it helps uh, the, your articulation of your knee um, ooh, if I just get rid of all this so we've got the demi greave then we've got the polyne plate here which is for the kneecap um, which would also have these um, plates here uh, which are called lames and they um, help with the articulation of the leg um, and they're riveted to what is called the crease plate here so the crease um, which goes way up um, way up right up to your th um, upper part of your thigh um, and you can see here these lines there that's just stop ribs um, and this whole area here is a separate plate in itself but um, it stops knives from riding up or uh, weapons from riding up and getting into the your groin region um, so that little area there is just to stop anything from sliding up um, if it if that happens um, so that is also attached by um, a strap here uh, a strap on the inside of the the, the uh, knee there um, and then there's also a strap here now that strap in particular goes above the greave uh, yeah the greave and then on the back there's almost like a staple that is shaped like this and then the uh, the strap goes through that um, and it helps um, basically attach uh, the greave to the crease or the demi greave here um, and it just helps keep the whole leg as one unit um, so yeah there you go so that's the legs nothing too fancy here um, of course you've got um, the wing part here that protects the out, outer side part of your knee or, or your leg um, because the back area is completely exposed um, you know there is a, a vulnerability but it that's typical of the of that period and um, so moving on you've got your whole leg harness on next would be putting on your halberdion which is a um, it's almost like a shirt of mail uh, in chain mail if you want to call it, call it like that but it's really just mail and that it goes over your entire body um, and I would probably terminate it the sleeve would probably terminate around the mid part of the forearm just so it covers your inside of your arm quite neatly um, you could have an arming jacket with um, voiders as possible and then a separate skirt um, but in this case what I would probably do is just have a, a whole shirt that you could put on and then just um, it just makes things a little easier um, and you'd have a belt on there um, around your sort of navel region where your, sort of like your be belly button line is um, sort of in between the rib cage and the pelvis um, have that nice and tight just to help with the distribution of the weight of the male because males are actually quite heavy um, certainly not light um, especially the uh, the heavier type as in like the thick rings um, so you have a halberdion on um, and then I have here sort of like fancy um, jagged edging here um, just for a bit of decoration um, with uh, brass rings uh, next I would put on the brigandine now the brigandine consists of uh, separate plates that are attached together um, and um, over the top you would have um, a fabric that basically makes everything go together um, and then it is fastened at the front here um, so the whole thing sort of goes on like a jacket um, and what I have done 
here, so if you read here, attached to brigandine, this area here, so those two hoops will actually be um, laced onto the shoulder point here and there. So it, it, you, what you do is um, put on the brigandine as well as the um, upper part of the arms. Um, attach your, <laughs> what I would do is keep the, um, I'll put the brigandine on, keep the um, upper part of the arms sort of hanging off and then use your arms which are free to put on uh, the straps at the front here um, and then after that I would um, strap up these two straps um, on the upper arm so the whole thing sort of goes on in one go um, or on the body um, but it does mean the fact that your upper part of your arms are free you've got plenty of um, movement free movement to put on <clears throat> everything else now um, at this point you've got your brigandine on um, <clears throat> let's talk about the brigandine just for a moment so the brigandine uh, so all these rivet heads here are actually just fastening the the plates to the fabric over the top fabric could be made of many things um, canvas uh, linen silk um, anything else really that would uh, be tough enough to actually re um, keep everything uh, you know together uh, so the, the brigandine is quite tight to the body um, wasp wasted is the technical word for this um, so it's quite thin here and that is to help with the weight distribution of the whole brigandine here so your weight of most of it is just on this area so it's resting on your hips and then the upper part is resting on your um on your shoulders so it's nice and tight to the body and it's not gonna one not restrict movement because it is tight to the body and it's also going to feel lighter because it's um quite close to the torso um so it's not nothing's going to be hanging much the only parts that are going to be hanging is the fold so the fold consists of this area here the lower abdomen which protects all that area um, from the belly button down to the top part of the leg um, and we've got these strips or uh, hoops of metal which are riveted to the fabric and then I've got this just fancy um, sort of uh, bits here that come off typical medieval looking um, daggered um, finishing points there just for a bit of decoration just a bit, bit of fun um, so you've got your whole brigandine on you've got your upper arm on with these these two straps here um, which means that you don't have the lower part of the arms on just yet I would leave that um, this I would leave that just for a moment uh, I would put on these besicues next um, just so you've got free movement of your arms um, to put these on um, yeah so the besicues protect the sort of armpit areas and a little higher than that um, uh, very common of the 15th century um, and the 16th century as well um, and what I have here is lacing points that go over the top um, you you would you should be able to do this by yourself I can't see any issues um, not being able to do that. Um, you should easily be able to see what you're doing as well. Um, so the Besque plate, um, it would be fastened over the mail, uh, or through, it could be th from the arming jacket through the mail, through the Besque plate, and then fastened. Um, or it could be um, just floating um, above from the male shirt and attached to that directly um, so there's two methods you could use there of uh, fastening your besicues onto uh, onto your torso um, so then I would put on my lower part of the arms so which consists of the cooter plate here um, here I've got like the inside version there you've got the outside visual there um, and then there's a lacing point here uh, you can see there where it's actually laced together um, 
quite easily. You could have just this one unit um, and put it the entire thing on by itself um, quite easily. Um, so that you, you'd have a strap on the inside of the arm. You can easily see that there. And then you've got the van brace, this, this plate here that is a full cannon. So you've got two plates which uh, have a hinge and then you can uh, strap on. Oh, I've accidentally saved it. <laughs> Uh, then you then you strap the whole thing on there. Okay, so you've got your arms um, and most of the most of it on or at this point. Next would be the bever. So we've got um, a collapsing bever that would allow you to have a bit more breathing room, um, a, a bit more visual uh, vision. Sorry. Um, so this plate here. Could collapse and just give you a bit more vision. Um, okay, and you would also have what I've done here is almost like a bib of a few lames um, just for an extra bit of protection on your collar bone area. Um, and uh, next, I would put on the the, the salad helmet, which only has a half visor, but that's fine. Um, that's Typical, you know, there's plenty of um, examples of that in the 15th century. Um, and uh, yeah, he's basically got the visor kind of half up at this point. Um, and uh, you would have your helmet on. And then after that, you would put your gauntlets on. So quite simple. Oh, yeah. By the way, there's the strap is on the outside here. Um, it'd be quite difficult to put the strap on the inside. There are examples of the strap um, over top of the bever. Um, see uh, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiatorius videos for that. Plenty of examples where that is the case. Um, and that's the whole harness. Um, you're, you're fully encased in protective gear there. Uh, by the way, the weapons um, is a short pole axe here, um, quite a fancy um, pole axe and then he's got a rondel dagger here uh, slung on his on his right hand side um, and then he's got a messer which is like a war knife um, it's a type of sword almost um, technically a knife in its construction uh, very typical of the later 15th century um, very much of a cutting type of weapon but it can also thrust uh, there we go. Uh, so please look at Zach and see what he's designed. Um, I'll put the links in the description below. And I hope you have a good day and I shall see you guys on the next one. Cheers, folks.